Hey, welcome to Standing in Faith. My name is Kat, and I'm in the studio with Jeff. Here I am. Mike. Hello. And David. Hi again. This is out of John 16, and it's it's the night right before Jesus was crucified, and he's up there ministering to his disciples, starting in verse 5. He says, Now I'm going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, Where are you going? Because I have said these things, you're filled with grief. But I tell you the truth, it's for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He won't speak on his own. He'll speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine, that's why I said that the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. So we're continuing to look at attributes of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. We started last week in Isaiah from the Old Testament perspective, and this week we're kind of hitting it from a New Testament perspective. Um, and I think it's kind of interesting that... Um, Yes, Jesus is actually talking about the Holy Spirit in this case, and he used some really interesting words to define it. Helper, counselor, spirit of truth, um, just to name a few from what you just read there. And those are actually real interesting to start thinking about. That's what the Holy Spirit is, Mm -hmm. a helper, a counselor. Um, that sounds really good to me. Yeah, me too. Yeah, comforter. I like that. Mm-hmm. Strengthener. Yeah, so in John 14, and I'm actually going to read this out of the amplified version of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is 14, 16 through 17. Again, Jesus saying, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby, that he may remain with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, welcome, and take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. Um, That's another powerful list of attributes of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, oftentimes I will reflect or if I'm talking about this, I mean, who doesn't need a comforter? Mm -hmm. I think we all do. Mm -hmm. And we all need a counselor, somebody to give us wise counsel and help us make good decisions. And I mean, we all need a helper. I can think of a, it would have been nice to have a helper this morning um, to, to come here and help fix our internet connection at the crack of dawn. Um, an intercessor, someone to always be praying for you, an advocate, somebody on your side that's, yeah, strengthener, yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. standby. I, I I think if we just asked people randomly, hey, would you like to have a comforter? Would you like to have a counselor? Would you? I think the answer would be, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'm not familiar with anybody who says, yeah, no, 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 I don't need that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I can that. make it on my own. I don't need a strengthener. I don't need an advocate. It's just mind-boggling to me. Well, it really speaks to me just how the Lord can – how the Lord is just so so full of all of these characteristics that he can meet everyone's need. You know, I have probably some friends who I might go to for counsel and maybe not other friends because, you know, 
there's just kind of different roles that some people have strengths in and, and play a role in my life in a lot of ways. Um, but man, the Holy Spirit just meets it all. Mm-hmm. He, there's nothing that he's lacking. There's nothing that he, a, a need that he can't meet. Um, in in John 14, as I went down to verse 18, I was kind of thinking on that, you know, I will... I will not leave you as orphans, and Amplified it says, comfortless, bereaved, and helpless. The Lord didn't, you know, when Jesus ascended, he didn't just leave behind nothing. He didn't just leave us hoping that we can figure things out. The Holy Spirit is in us to meet all of those needs, to care for us in all of the ways that he cares for us, to reveal wisdom to us, to give us understanding. All the things that we spoke about last week, all of those things, the Holy Spirit works in us. And that's who, again, that's who's in us. Not not someone we have to go out and seek and find, but someone who dwells in us that is filling us with all of those things all the time. Yeah, he sent to us. Mm-hmm. We didn't have to go, like you said, go out looking mm-hmm. for him. Which I really think speaks to the love of the Lord too, right? We didn't have to go out and find him. We don't have to go out and, and hope that we we can find where the Holy Spirit's hanging out and meet with him. He was sent to us to, to be in us. The Lord gave him as a gift to us to, mm-hmm. to dwell in us. There was, uh, I've been meditating on these like 14, 15, 16 uh, chapters in John for a few weeks. And there was a couple of times where um, Jesus is talking about who's going to give the Holy Spirit. And in fourteen, chapter 14, he's talking about, he's like, I'll ask the Father and he will give you another counselor, helper, comforter. And then later he says, um, whom the, you know, the counsel, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. And then later he says about the Holy Spirit in chapter 15, whom I will send to you from the Father. And then in chapter 16, he's like, but if I go, I will send him. So you kind of see that trinity. It's all like it's all like mixed together, you know, or I don't know, like what the appropriate theological word would be. But you've got it's like the Holy Spirit and and the Father and the Son are all like in each other, Mm -hmm. like he says. It's, it's all like, who's going to send it? Is it the Father or the Son? It's both. Both are sending. I think an important thing to see in that uh, chapter 14, too, was that where Jesus says, um, he is with you, but he shall be in you, mm-hmm. which is a, a major separation from Old Testament New Testament. Because you remember in David's psalm uh, that he prayed, Psalm 51, where he says, take not your Holy Spirit from me, you know? And I've heard, of course, people say, oh, you know, he's going to take the Holy Spirit from me. Well, if the Holy Spirit lives in you, he's one spirit with you, he's not going to take the Holy Spirit away from you. Mm -hmm. He can't. If he does, then your spirit's going with that because it's sealed with the Holy Spirit. But if you remember Saul back in the day, it says, and God removed his spirit from Saul and sent him an evil spirit that harassed him. Mm-hmm. It would come and go, but but that's that was the nature of it. So the spirit of God was always with, you know, especially these the prophets and all these different people um, that he that God worked with, um, but. He wasn't in them. Mm-hmm. And the amazing thing now is, which is which was the, the mystery of all the ages anyway, is Christ in you, the hope of glory. From Colossians 1, I believe, 27, where it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. How is he in us? Through the Holy Spirit, of course. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, you have the Father. It says, we will come and, and, and be in you. Um, so... There's another passage that says we will come and be in you. I think it's further down in John, but it, it, it's chapter 14. 14, yeah. yeah. Uh, further down in there it says we we will come. So if you get the Holy Spirit, you get the Father and the Son, um, because they're they're one. I mean, you know, they don't operate against each other. Mm-hmm. But it's the Holy Spirit that comes and then reveals to us in the scriptures that that Cat read reveals to us Jesus mm-hmm. and it was that's how 
that's the, the amazing, on the, after the day of Pentecost, all of a sudden, all these disciples go, oh, I see. You know, it's kind of like their eyes are opened. They un begin to understand the, all the revelation that Jesus has been teaching them. It all of a sudden kind of fits together and makes sense. Mm. Well, of course, because the Holy Spirit's in them now, revealing Jesus to them and revealing to him, to them what he said so that they could begin to expose or expose that to, to the world. And um, Yeah, I like how Peter gets up and he's preaching this whole sermon, but Jesus had said, the Holy Spirit's going to remind you of everything I said to you. You know, so all those years, they, you know, how could you remember three years of stuff? And, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's the Holy Spirit will remind you. Yeah, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, he even told him, he says, don't worry about what you're going to say when they drag you before mm -hmm. synagogues and courts and all that. He says, because I'm going to give you what you need, mm -hmm. you know. It's not like you got to prepare and study ahead of time in order to go speak to these places where they drag you. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to give you what you need mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. And that would be what the Holy Spirit would speak through them. Mm. kind of think it's interesting that, so we're reading out multiple translations mm -hmm. and um, multiple verses they're all talking about the spirit of truth, capitalized. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really interesting. In, a, in modern society right now, everybody seems to be making their own truth. Mm -hmm. right? What is truth? What, I, it's whatever I want it to be. Actually not. Right? There's a spirit of truth that's mm -hmm. going to reveal, as we've just heard, and I think it was in John 16, he's going to reveal all things, right? He's going to reveal truth to us. Um, and there was a section there that you read, Kat, um, where it was, he was convicting us of our sin, our righteousness, and... Judgment. Judgment. Um, I actually went and like looked up convict because I'm like, I'm curious about what the Bible would say about that. To bring to the light, to expose. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought that was really kind of a cool way, right? So he's going to bring to the light and expose our sin. Our, in, in this case, He's going to show us what is righteousness, and that mm -hmm. would mean that he has to reveal our unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's going to bring judgment. Now, I think it's really interesting, in verse 11, the judgment is against the, I'm putting air quotes around this, small case ruler of this world. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't, at this point, it wasn't, Judgment against the world. It was judgment against the small. Yeah, the evil one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Judgment against Satan. And the reason I'm bringing these things up specifically is because um, I think it would be nice to have truth. Mm -hmm. I think that having truth is actually a nice thing to have. It's not something we should be making up. Um, and I think having our stuff exposed and brought into the light it, it's for our good mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to me these things are these things are attributes of a loving god who cares for us not trying to do us harm but mm -hmm. trying to to show us what harm we do to ourselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. go back mm -hmm. to judgment right he judged the evil one not us. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. So he doesn't judge us for all that. He convicts us of those. He brings them into the light. Yeah. So that so that we see them, we are sorrowful mm -hmm. unto repentance is what it says, and we get freed from that. But he never in that part of it judges or condemns us mm -hmm. ever. Exactly my point. Um. Thank you. The, the idea here that I'm ultimately trying to bring us to is I think many times w we're not sure what the Holy Spirit is. And that might produce some fear in people and make them uncertain. 
They don't want to be kooky. They don't want to be wacky. They don't want to be judged. They don't want it. But those are not what he brings to us, Mm-mm. right? which is the main point I'm trying to make. Because two weeks ago, um, David, you shared your story out of Luke 11, where you asked for the Holy Spirit. And in Luke 11, 12, maybe? Or 11. Pretty close. Yeah. I think right? it's 10 through 13. How much more does your heavenly father want to give you the good gift of the spirit, mm-hmm. his Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. if you ask? Mm-hmm. So if you ask, then here's what you get. You get a comforter. You get a helper. You get a counselor. You get an intercessor. You get an advocate. You get a strengthener. You get a standby. You get truth. Um, Not a judge. Right. Yes. Yeah. Th- those are all wonderful things. Mm-hmm. I, it, honestly, sometimes I scratch my head and go, I said this already, but who wouldn't want that? Mm-hmm. Or shouldn't everybody want that? Maybe it's a better way to say it without double negatives. I mean, so it it's kind of just that simple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's interesting because I like this whole judge thing is that when we, when we judge, we put ourselves on the seat of God. Mm-hmm. We become God when we judge ourselves or we judge others. That's what we're saying. Mm-hmm. When God is not even doing it, he judged Satan. Mm -hmm. Right. And the Holy Spirit convicts us. Now, that sounds amazing because if we're used to help in the process of bringing conviction, it's because the Holy Spirit used whatever it is that we said that brought conviction to someone. Mm -hmm. But it did not bring judgment. If we bring judgment to someone, then we're not operating – out of the Holy Spirit at all because the Holy Spirit doesn't work that way. He's a comforter. He's a counselor. He's an advocate. He's all these amazing things that is wooing us and drawing us closer into this relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To, for us to enjoy that fellowship that, that, that the Trinity is involved, that has, has so enjoyed from eternity. That's a purpose. Totally. What you're talking about is a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's a created purpose. We were purpose built to be in to be included as part of that relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if anybody's wondering what their purpose is, there you go. That's one of that's one of your purposes to be in relationship and fellowship with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Colossians three. Keep your mind on things above where you are seated with God in Christ. You're seated with him in essence Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he wants to bring you into that sweet fellowship and enjoy God. Yeah, nothing to fear. In Ezekiel 36, that was one of the promises God made. He said, I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will be my people. I will be your God. And the, his Holy Spirit, his spirit, because it, it's not our new spirit that we get, because he mentions that earlier in the chapter, but he's like, I'm going to put my spirit in you. Mm-hmm. That, that comes out of, there's, there's a verse, it's 1 Corinthians six seventeen, where your spirit becomes one spirit with the Holy Spirit. So I find that's really fascinating. And if you need more proof, you can read... Um, 1 Corinthians 2, maybe starting at 10 through 14, talks about the fact that we have a spirit, right? But then when we, when we become one spirit with the Holy Spirit, I like to, my mental image of that is um, a zipper that's been super glued, <laughs> right? Once it's zipped up, it stays zipped up. Right? You can't unzip it anymore. Um, so you're actually have become your spirit and the Holy Spirit have become one spirit. So now it's not just Jeff's spirit and it's not just Holy Spirit. It's Holy Spirit and Jeff mm-hmm. together. So if that's the case, which is is the case, it's not if it was or anything else, that's the case. Why is it we do the hateful things we do? Well, we still have a sinful nature battling within us. Yeah, but 
maybe a little bit more than that even. Is it because we're not dependent upon that relationship of the Holy Spirit in us? Because we're not listening to the Holy Spirit and we're just spouting off our stuff, you know? This is what I think. You know, anytime you stop and say, this is what I think about that, you ought to stop and say, whoa, Holy Spirit, what is it that you think about mm -hmm. this? You know, because it goes back to the what we did before where we talked about the spirit of wisdom and understanding, counsel, and might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord is what we want is wisdom and understanding in situations. Where does that come from? Counsel. The spirit yeah, of the Lord. Spirit, Lord it's yeah. within us, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, my answer to your question, David, would be rarely are we taught about this, our spirituality. Um, when I went and grew up and went to school and then college and then university, um, I wasn't taught anything about spirit things. It was all natural. It was all science and math and engineering and right calculus and calculating and logic, and it was all natural stuff. Um, so I don't think we have a really... Uh, unless if you just happen to be sitting under good teaching, I don't think that there's a lot of teaching about what the Holy Spirit does for us and then how we partner and work together with the Holy Spirit and walk in that. I, don't, I think that there needs to be more of that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully some of what we're going to talk about during this season provides some of that. Um, but I guess the reality is, <laughs> interesting, we're just talking about this. We are spirits, right? Genesis 1, 26. 26. Um, I always want to say 27. <laughs> um, Genesis 1, 26. We were created in his likeness and in his image. Well, I think it comes out of John 4, 24. Um, God is spirit. So if we're created in his likeness, we were created with a spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and then when we're created in his image, then... Not only are we created like him, but we're, we're like a replica of his image. So that would mean our spirit has the same abilities and faculties and then some that our natural would have. Yeah. Which gets into a big conversation about that. But yeah. I, think the, I think the important thing is uh, in our lives is more and more hungering for God to teach us. You know, one of my prayers is teach me, Holy Spirit. Teach me so that, that I recognize scenarios and situations that I get into where I can hear him as opposed to me just blurting out, which I can do. Um, and, and instead of just saying, okay, stopping for a minute, Holy Spirit, how would what would you do in this scenario? What would how would you react in this scenario? Which would be totally different than our normal yep. venue. Mm -hmm. Well, it, the scriptures we read said it would he would guide us into truth. Well, that's kind of what you're talking about. He would teach us truth, right? He would, yeah. He's he's there, always available and accessible. Mm -hmm. To anybody who's asked for him to be given to them. Mm -hmm. So he's there. So we just need to learn how to work with him and interact with him. David kind of mentioned this earlier is how to quote unquote hear from them, right? To, to listen. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's kind of, I guess, ultimately I'm going back to David's question. Mm -hmm. But that's what I think the, the challenge is for us is to start to learn more about and embrace our spirituality because mm -hmm. we are spirit. Mm -hmm. Everybody is. Believers or unbelievers or non-believers, they have a spirit. Mm -hmm. It's it's for the believers, it's that's the the getting it together and zipping it up with the Holy Spirit that we're talking about. But even unbelievers have a spirit. The question is, a spirit of what? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And what I find to be interesting is, you know, and again, this is <laughs> full disclosure. This is a lot I, I've had to learn and a lot that I've been immersed in, it, you know, that I, I haven't had growing up and that kind of thing, because I, I was taught to kind of question so much and, oh, you know, is that really the Holy Spirit or, you know, oh, you know, reasoning came in as if the Holy Spirit was unreasonable when really there's so much more reason, there's so much more rationality and so much more truth. I mean, he's the source of truth, so mm-hmm. he is truth. Mm-hmm. I find that it's not as difficult to hear him as I thought it would be. And it's not as, is is yeah, just not as difficult. Once, once I really start to trust him, that's been the thing for me, and that's where I'll speak for myself, right. is really starting to trust what the Holy Spirit is saying. And I've always kind of had that, and I've never really given him credit for it because I'd get these like gut feelings like, no, you probably shouldn't say that thing right now. Not to say that you shouldn't say that thing, but just don't say it now. Mm-hmm. And then in my in me, the part of me that says, well, but I have it and I should just say it, and I, I say it anyway, inevitably, it would go sideways every single yep. time, every time. And then I'd be left like having to like sort of reel and rail against this mistake that I made. But if I listened and waited and said, all right, Lord, you tell me when to say this thing, it always went over well. Mm-hmm. Every time, not just some of the time, every single time. So what I've come to find is that for me, and not to say there isn't practice or I haven't had to learn or isn't wasn't difficult, but I'm learning how to just trust him more and know that if I sit down with him and say, all right, Holy Spirit, what's going on? How do I respond? What do I say? When do I say it? I get answers. And it's not always just an immediate thing either. Like this takes some discipline as well. It takes sometimes repeated just sitting and even getting things in bits and pieces, Mm -hmm. but knowing not to act, not to do, not to say before I really kind of get that green light. Um, So I kind of went off a little bit on a bunny trail there, but, you know, I. I was very hung up for a while on this is too difficult, this is too hard. Other people do this so much better than me. It's all of that kind of like natural stuff creeping in like as if it's a it's as if it's like math, you know, if I can just learn the 1 plus 1 that I'm always going to get to 2 and other people have just figured out 1 plus 1 and I still can't figure it out. It's not I found that it's just not as complicated. What gets in the way is me. Mm -hmm. I get in the way, Mm -hmm. not my ability to hear him. It's interesting that you said gut because my – I don't know what I'm supposed to call her. My wife, Liz, who's in heaven now, um, she she used to get these – she talk about them all the time. I got – my I got a gut. My gut doesn't feel good about that or I don't feel good about – and in – so we were married for 34 years. In the beginning, I'm like, what the heck is this gut thing, right? But over time, what I learned is that was what she called it. But what it was is it was the Holy Spirit. So whenever she – it got to the point whenever she started talking about her gut, right, her gut instinct, her gut response, her gut – as soon as she said the word gut, my ears perked up because I'm like, okay, (laughs) what's your gut telling you? (laughs) And the reason I'm – it's kind of funny, but I'm being serious with this. Um, I think the same thing works in thoughts. We think these thoughts that are, that just pop into our head are, are ours. Um, I think it's the Holy Spirit. I think what what it takes time is to recognize, ah, that's what that was. And as soon as you start to recognize, ah, that's what that was, that's when the trust starts to build. It's mm-hmm. interesting. I actually think trust and respect are built mm, yeah. through learning and experience, sure. mm-hmm. right? The more experience that you have, the more learning that you have with it, the more trust that or respect that comes with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. and we don't need to beat ourselves up over it. No, nope. right. No, nope. that's part nope. of God's nope. process. I mean, you know, a little child learns. You know, um, you know, every time a child makes a mistake, we don't pass him upside the head and say, you know, you well, hopefully, didn't do that. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. We shouldn't. Exactly. Yeah, no, we shouldn't. That that you didn't do this right or whatever. We try and train them, you mm-hmm. know, to 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 walk the way they're supposed to and learn the way they're supposed to, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I, the sad thing is that I think so many times is we get so caught up in the law. Mm-hmm. We've yeah. got to learn the law in order to learn how to live. You cannot learn the law in order to learn how to live because you cannot keep the law. In any form or fashion, you're going to bust it up somehow. Even like Jesus said, in your thoughts, mm-hmm. that counts too. Whether, mm-hmm. you, whether you do it in your actions or not doesn't matter. Um, and so he was you know, it, it, that definitely wanting us to, to be able to walk in this path of righteousness, but with him constantly helping us to do that, mm-hmm. to walk. He's our shepherd, so of course, if we walk with the shepherd, you know, he's going to teach us to walk in the paths of righteousness. It's not going to be, well, I busted that law up. Well, I'm condemned. You know, and that's what we do. We immediately judge ourselves Mm -hmm. instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to convict us of those things, to bring it to light, to show us, to reveal to us so that we go, oh, yeah. Man, I am so sorry about that. Okay, let's move on. Let's hopefully we've learned something from this. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's really important because no one. I mean, I definitely don't do this perfectly, and I have room to grow and room to learn and and everything. I mean, by no means am I there. But what's what's really comforting in in what you're saying to me is, I. I don't need to be stuck in judgment. I don't need to be stuck in comparison of this is the Lord who is working in me individually to show me how he is leading me in this. And it's it's not about anyone else or anything like that. It's about his just sweet presence taking time with how he knows that I need to learn or how someone else needs to learn or whatever it is. It's not about being or doing it the way somebody else does. It's about he's how he's showing us yeah, each how second, to do it. Second Corinthians ten, um, way down the list there, whatever scripture it is, but it's in Second Corinthians ten. He says, Quit comparing yourselves with others. In mm-hmm. other words, stop comparing yourselves with yourselves or whatever. Comparing. Because what you do with that is that exactly what you were talking about. Mike, when you start comparing yourself to someone else, that is not your life. Now, there may be someone that you look up to, you know, that that can mentor you or someone you look up to to say, I want to I want to be like that. Mm-hmm. We need that. Everybody yes. should have that. Yep. What yes. you're yep. describing now, everybody mm-hmm. should have that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That and so that's that we aspire to be like that. So how do the, how did they get to where they do? They go, well, I want to know. Mm-hmm. I want to know what it is that, that, that makes you be able to live the way you live and, and, and act the way you act. I want to know that from this person. Mm. Right. It's interesting. As we're sitting here talking about this type of stuff, I, in the last two weeks, I can think of not one single meeting, gathering, group, interaction that I haven't seen a learning come out of, Mm -hmm. right? Something that needs to be talked through, addressed, learned, understood, improved, right? So I don't think of it in terms of that's a bad thing. I think of it as it's a wonderful thing. That's what the Holy Spirit – we just – we've been talking about it for 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's what the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit does. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so let's learn from it. Yeah. Um, let's give ourselves some some liberty not to have to be perfect all the time, but to do our best and learn when we need to learn. Mm-hmm. That's – to me, that's what growth is. And, and you know – 
and mature eating. Yeah. I like to be around people who call you out on stuff. Mm. Not in a judgmental way. No. Not in a, because it even talks about, was it Proverbs, something about the brother that rebukes you, you know, or that, that rebuke from a brother is like, it's good. But it's a good rebuke. It's a kind of rebuke that you know is coming from the Holy Spirit. It's mm-hmm. not a rebuke that, that judges you, that says, I'm better than you, um, or whatever. And, and rebuke is, sounds like a hard word, but it's really, it's really the Holy Spirit in that person exposing to the light the truth. Yeah, exactly. Yep. You know? And sometimes that stings, but that's what conviction does. It stings. Mm-hmm. And it's a good sting. It's a holy, sweet sting. And, but it's not something that make, should make you pile this horrible, oh, God, I'm so awful type thing on you. Mm-hmm. No. It's, it's a learning moment. Mm-hmm. And I think that those sorts of things can help build trust and can build community as well. Because, yeah, you know that it's not coming from a place of judgment. It's coming from a place of correction and growth and learning. And so that draws – that can draw people closer together because they know I can trust this person enough to hear me and listen to me, but also to correct me and to teach me and to help me grow. And so if people are willing to do that with each other, I think that that helps build the things up rather than break them down. We talked about this last week. What you're defining to me is humility mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. as opposed to pride Yeah, that mm-hmm. would say, no, I uh, pride is a narcissist. Right, pride is always somebody else's fault. You're perfect, and it can't be me. And that's mm-hmm. not what you just described at mm-hmm. all, Mike. Mm-hmm. What you described as uh, a mind and a heart that's that's wanting to grow, wanting to learn, wanting to to mature, wanting to press on, wanting to run their race and finish strong. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's that's a humble, teachable heart, and yeah, I believe that was they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd like that to be part of my inheritance. Oh yeah, we yeah. did a really cool inheritance episode. At the end of our last season, you should go check out. Mm-hmm. Paul has a prayer for the Ephesians. It's in the first chapter that mentions inheritance, and he's talking about, like, after I've heard about your faith, he said, I, I just keep asking God the of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that he would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so you may know him better. I like that. You get a spirit of wisdom and revelation so you can know God better, because that's really the ultimate reason, is so we can be in better relationship with him and know him better and know him better. And he says, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Yeah, and that's the power that lives within us, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead mm-hmm. is the power that lives within us. And it's an amazing thing. It's something you ought to meditate on sometime to think of, wow, almighty God, the power, the mighty power of God lives in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The power that formed the universe lives in me. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah. It is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, you go back to even to the the humble thing, and I think about over all the years of, of you know, arguments and stuff, you know, in a relationship, 50 years of it with Sheila. And I think about all the times that that she has been that conviction for me, you know, and I, I would swell up, of course, and, and you know, go, well, yeah, I mean, no, hey. but then, thank God, I would go and ask the Holy Spirit about it. And the Holy Spirit would kind of say, well, you know, she's probably right. (laughs) (laughs) Not probably. She really was. I remember um, years ago, and I may have told this story before, but ad nauseum anyway. um, She, uh, I used to get up early in the morning and I'd go down and I'd pray, meditate for, you know, an hour and a half or so because, you know, 
it was what you were supposed to do. And then they would come down for breakfast, and I'd get up after all of this, quote, time with God, and I would start talking this, blah, blah, blah. blah. Silent one day she came to me, and she said, uh, have you ever listened the way you talk to us, to her, to the kids? And I said, what are you talking about? You should stop sometime and listen to yourself the way you talk to us. And I thought, wow. Well, I, I did. I went and I says, okay, God, I want you to reveal to me what she's talking about. Because I didn't see it. It's a blind spot, mm. right? And sure enough, the next time, bam, there it was. I thought, oh, God, she's so right. Man, I need some help here, God, you know? But it was a reckoning and a recognizing of it. And it came as a, a, a it came as a good conviction for me to begin to change the way I spoke to them, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and yeah, it was it it helped big time. Every time the Holy Spirit has done that to me, it's always done so gently mm -hmm. that you could actually miss. That it happened, mm -hmm. um, and when it when it happens, oh, I find almost a hundred percent of the time, my response is always right. It's just like all of a sudden, it's like it's been revealed. I'm like right. I it's not even it for me. It's never contentious. It's never. Uh, I'm always like wow, right, wow. Right, right, and then once you realize it, then I believe, and this goes back to maturing. We did a whole season on that too, um, but <laughs> maturing. A lot of shameless plugs today, um, but <laughs> I think that that's part of the maturing process and the growth process. Is is that's that is what we're that's what the Holy Spirit does is He's transforming us. Day by day, minute by minute, step by step, he's transforming us more and more and more into the image of Christ. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which yep. it should be. It shouldn't be a scary thing. It shouldn't be something that somebody's not so sure about. It should be. Yeah, I want those things. Those are wonderful things. I want it. I want that. Again, they're back to purpose. That's part of our. It's part of the purpose right now is for us to become more like him. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. I just looked. We need to bless the listeners. Okay. Lord, I bless all of those that are listening today that the sweetness of your voice would be something that they would yearn for more than anything else. And whether they hear it through another person or just as you speak to them in their understanding that you would just reveal yourself as the comforter the advocate the one who the paraclete the one who comes alongside the one who is constantly there to transform to renew to to help our helper in walking out this life just bless each of us lord with that and a, and just a, a, a constant hunger for that Amen. Amen. Amen.